Last week, Starship pulled off something truly spectacular. During its fifth test flight, it not only launched the enormous super heavy first stage booster, but caught it again on the very same launch tower it had just left minutes before. Not long after, the upper stage ship made its own triumphant return, re-entering the atmosphere and softly splashing down in the Indian Ocean. What's groundbreaking here is that, aside from a staging ring discarded by the booster, every piece of this rocket made a controlled return to Earth. This marks a huge step towards the dream of a fully reusable launch vehicle, something that could change space travel forever. Imagine sending massive amounts of cargo into orbit, far beyond what SpaceX's Falcon 9, impressive as it is, can achieve. The key issue in spaceflight has always been mass. Back in the space race, the Soviets were able to send more mass into space with a single launch, causing panic in the US that led to the formation of NASA and America's victory in the moon race. Fast forward to today, and the most important metric is cost per kilogram. Even with the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy driving costs down, it still costs over a thousand US dollars to send just one kilogram into low Earth orbit. But Starship? Well, depending on who you ask, it promises to bring that cost down to somewhere between $10 and $100 per kilogram. This could make space not only more accessible, but transform what we think is possible in space exploration. Many of the big obstacles to interplanetary travel, things like cosmic radiation and the complexities of life support systems, are actually mass problems. Protecting astronauts from radiation means more shielding, which means more mass. The same goes for bioregenerative life support systems that recycle waste into consumables. We're not quite there yet technologically, but we can compensate by sending supplies from Earth. Again, it's about managing mass. Now, there are still some major engineering hurdles to clear, but with launch costs about to plummet, there's no shortage of talent here on Earth ready to solve these problems. Just like how shrinking transistors sparked the computer revolution, cheaper mass to orbit will unlock rapid solutions to the challenges of living in space. If Starship succeeds, it could be the key to making this future a reality. Sure, SpaceX is a few years behind schedule and the pressure's on. They need to meet their commitment to NASA for the Artemis missions and Musk himself has a personal vision, sending humans to Mars within his lifetime. Musk isn't just aiming for a successful launch. He wants to ramp up to as many as 1,000 launches per year by 2028. Even if SpaceX achieves a fraction of that, it will fundamentally change life on this planet and beyond. At this point, it's looking more likely than ever that humans will set foot on Mars. But timing is everything. Since the journey to Mars is only feasible when the planets are aligned, a window that opens every 26 months. We're at the end of one such window right now, and the next one won't be until late 2026. By then, if all goes to plan, SpaceX could send unmanned ships to Mars to pave the way. It's worth noting that the burn required to get to Mars from low Earth orbit is actually shorter than the one needed to get the ship into orbit in the first place. We know it's doable. It's just a matter of refueling the ship in space, something SpaceX plans to demonstrate as part of its Artemis contract next year. Two years from now, expect to see unmanned ships trying to enter Mars' atmosphere and land. Success isn't guaranteed, and Musk has been clear, humans won't go until these unmanned missions are landing safely. Once those ships are on the ground, rovers will be sent out to deploy solar panels to set up a small chemical plant to produce propellant for the crew's return. But don't hold your breath for a human landing in the 2029 window. It's more likely SpaceX will keep running unmanned missions until they're confident. What about the 2031 window? Now that's a possibility for the first manned flight to Mars. By the 2033 window, it seems likely that humans will finally touch down on the red planet. Once the first crew makes it, the floodgates will open. Each window will see more and more people heading to Mars. The first Martian settlers will have to be risk takers, building a base and figuring out how to survive on this harsh new world. But as they make Mars safer, more cautious explorers will follow, expanding settlements and setting up industry. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the space industry will explode. Starship's interior is huge, comparable to the American Skylab of the 1970s, but much wider and shorter. This means space tourism will become vastly more affordable, perhaps a hundred times cheaper than what's available today. And it will be more comfortable too, making space a reality for a lot more people. 
more scientists will head to space as well, conducting experiments that are currently done using higher altitude balloons or short parabolic flights. Who knows, maybe your kids studying STEM in college will get a shot at doing research in orbit. Just as the growth of computing led to new industries and technologies, cheap access to orbit will unlock new possibilities we can't even fully imagine. Companies will build data centers in space, launch solar-powered satellites that beam energy back to Earth, and maybe even mine asteroids for precious metals. Will all these ventures succeed? Maybe, maybe not. But the sheer effort will undoubtedly push humanity forward, making us richer in the process. If Starship keeps up this pace, the next decade could be a game changer. And in the decades that follow, even more revolutionary shifts will take place some of which could still happen within our lifetimes. We could see a steady stream of migrants heading to Mars, so many that Earth's governments might start worrying about losing their brightest minds to the red planet. New nations could be founded there, stirring up political upheaval back here. Space habitats will pop up around Earth and the Moon. They'll be easier to reach than Mars, more comfortable and offer more frequent travel back and forth, but they'll likely remain under Earth's political control. These habitats will be so large that they'll be visible to the naked eye. Unlike the tiny dot of the International Space Station, you'll actually be able to see these structures rotating in the night sky, generating artificial gravity for their inhabitants. Major human expeditions will be sent to the outer planets, scouring the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn for signs of life. Commercial missions will mine asteroids and set up bases, further expanding humanity's reach. With this surge of energy and resources, humanity will begin its ascent on the Kardashev scale unlocking new opportunities and adventures on a cosmic scale. What's the ultimate goal? Well, perhaps one day we'll send a probe to Alpha Centauri and get a glimpse of the planets orbiting those stars. If any of those planets look promising, who knows, by the end of this century, we could be building a spacecraft to take us there. The question is whether SpaceX can make space cheap enough to turn these dreams into a reality. Even if they stumble, there are plenty of competitors ready to step in. Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, Stoke Space, and others are all racing to follow in SpaceX's footsteps. The fact that SpaceX nailed the first ever booster catch on its first try, something even Elon Musk thought would take three attempts, shows that the future we're imagining might be closer than we think. This video is based on an essay by Peter Haig, an astrophysics PhD and independent space analyst based in the UK. It was originally published in Quillette on the 21st of October, 2024. You can read it for yourself at quillette.com. Thanks for watching.